And the Quran's first commandment was read, iqra, to read. And I think Islam, uh, like Christianity, developed an incredible civilization of literacy. And that's why I, one of the things that Jacques Barzan in his, uh, in his book, uh, From Dawn to Decadence, he has a chapter about what he called primitivism, you know, the kind of Rousseauian fallacy uh, where people um, look at very primitive life as some kind of an ideal. And, uh, and I, I think that, that to me is a great uh, tragedy because the, the life of the mind, the fact that we are unique amongst uh, creation in that we do have minds and we have this ability to grapple with nothing and infinity as concepts, which is something that the God who created our imaginations gave us those imaginations uh, to be able to do that. And that's something so extraordinary. And to squander this incredible opportunity, I just, I feel for our young people because they're given relativism in schools, they're taught doctrines that this really is meaningless. And then they're told, on the other hand, about rights that they never ground in anything. And this is, leads me to my last question to you. I think you make a very powerful argument in, in uh, your book on dialectic, that you know, seeking the good, uh, whether it's you know the moral virtues, the intellectual virtues, seeking the good requires metaphysics. And at Zaytuna, we we do really try to give our students you know an introduction to metaphysics. So I'd really like you to talk about why metaphysics is so fundamental and important to the life of the mind. Yes. Yeah, so in the in the tradition that we work out of. Right. And you're right that uh, Albertus Magnus, Thomas Aquinas's great teacher was immersed in in the writers from your tradition. And uh, and that uh, Aquinas could not have done his work without that training. And that was a training that saw these texts and commentaries on them as building up, not as standing between us and reality, but as building up insight and vocabulary to be able to discern and apprehend the truth about reality more fully. And in this tradition, the more fully we apprehend it, the more deeply mysterious it becomes. That's yeah. a great paradox of metaphysics as it's understood in the Arabic Islamic tradition and in uh, in the Christian tradition, at least amongst the best practitioners in those traditions. Uh, without some sense, I mean, let me talk about this just in, in terms of our experience of people and our lives and then broaden out to something more substantive about metaphysics. Without some sense, and this is often where secular people begin to have quasi-religious thoughts and sometimes begin a quest for religion and conversion, some sense that there are layers, mysteries, coincidences on one level, which might be providence on another, that, that there are things that I'm not apprehending, levels of depth about my relationship with other people, about my own life, about good things that I've done, about evil that I have done. Without some sense of that depth perspective in our lives, our lives just become flat and meaningless and, uh, and listless, right? And without joy, without energy, without mystery. So when we have the sense that we're on a quest, as, as Walker Percy puts it in one of his books, to be on the quest is to be on to something the sense that there's something more, right? That, that I can't quite apprehend, but it's, it's nagging at me. It's gnawing at me. It's pulling me. It's drawing me. That sense that there's something more leads ultimately to certain kinds of affirmations about reality as being deeper and richer than my immediate experience allows, but as being revealed to some extent in my immediate experience. And that's the beginning of metaphysics. The the sense that there is a whole of which I am a part. 
and that my one of my tasks as a human person in this great, vast, mysterious cosmos where I find myself in a on a tiny speck of matter called planet Earth for an infinitesimally small period of time. One of my tasks is to try and understand my place within the whole. That's right. metaphysics. That's well, the orientation of metaphysics. It's interesting that you're saying that because uh, in uh, uh, Nietzsche, who was dealing with, with the collapse of metaphysics uh, in amongst the Europeans, um, he wrote in uh, the collapse of cosmological values that one of the he he gives these three different degrees of, of nihilism or nihilism, and and he says that the second one is a loss of 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 a holistic view of the universe that, that which is exactly to the point that you're making that this this is where nihilism arises out of it arises out of this loss. And in the discarded image, I mean, that's one of the things that C.S. Lewis yeah. talks about, is that the thing he envied most about the pre-moderns is they really had worked it all out and had such a holistic view uh, of, of the world and understood it within that holism. And so getting back to that, being whole again, I mean, it's interesting that healthy comes from whole. You know, the, the word, the root of that word is, is from the same uh, root that we get whole from. To be healthy is to be whole. And it seems that we're so fragmented. Mm -hmm.